Hello, I'm Dr. Ron England, and today I've got a real, this is a, at request of the students, I'm going to take you through NoSQL, which stands for not only SQL, not that there's no SQL, but not only SQL, and I'm going to specifically use Amazon Web Services, um, DynamoDB, to demonstrate how uh, not only SQL works, NoSQL works. So, um, first thing that you'll need to do, there's a couple things you're going to need to do to be able to follow what's going on with this uh, lecture. There's a lot of good documentation on on NoSQL that uh, you can, or called NoSQL, that you can use. Um, but the first thing you'll have to do if you're going to follow what's going on with this and actually work through this is you're going to have to create an Amazon Web Services account. Um, if you've already got an Amazon Prime account or another type of Amazon account, um, it's actually not that terribly hard to do. You create it, you will need a credit card number. Doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get charged because most of the services, it's pretty easy to stay below the threshold for the for the free version of that, and even then it's not tremendously exp uh, ex uh, expensive. So if you create this account, you're going to be able to go to um, your actual management console inside of Amazon Web Services. And if you are familiar with looking at you know, different consoles, this has got a tremendous number of services that are available to you and this is all cloud-based so everything that you're going to be doing is working with computers that are out there in the cloud uh, the most common one that you typically be, would be working with for most people is the EC2 where you actually can create a virtual server out in the cloud that's doing stuff it's a, really a server in reality it's a virtual server and you know we don't really worry about how it's partitioned and put together but it, as far as all intents and purposes to you it looks like a server we're going to be looking at DynamoDB. And DynamoDB is an NoSQL, um, basically, full database. And I've already created a DynamoDB. And um, you get a console that you can actually work with specifically for working with DynamoDB. Um, you know, you've got this, uh, I'll start here with the DynamoDB interface. This is the primary interface. I've got one table in my interface right now. and I'm going to go through creating a table. I'm not going to use this table in this example, but I want you to see the steps for creating a table. And it actually kind of gets me through this concept of how NO tables work. So if you create a table, you'll notice that you've got a couple things, and I'm going to call this table2 because I'm going to delete it anyway. And I've got this primary key that I can um, put together for the primary key. And the way an NO table works is, is that you access each row in the table simply through a primary through its primary key. Now, the primary key can actually be a multiple primary key. I'm going to be using a hash key, and I'm going to be using a string in this case. Um, when you're doing a primary key type of hash and range, or probably I'm not going to cover that tremendously here, but there's basically has this concept of a dual primary key that allows you to key into the elements of the table through the hash and a range. In this case, the hash is something that has to be unique. Um, a good option for unique would be ID. Now, unlike a SQL database where you've got this concept of an identity, which ensures that you have um, the primary key being unique by incrementing each time, you don't get that capability right here, at least not currently with uh, NoSQL NO databases. So, you're going to be responsible for managing the uniqueness of this primary key. Now here's where it's kind of unique and there's a lot of um, lectures and, and materials out there to, to go through the concept of what an uh, NO uh, database is. I'm going to go ahead and go through the next steps and then explain that. So the only thing I'm setting in this case is the primary key. There's nothing else I'm setting. So I continue. Now the next step is I got to kind of say, hey, how much am I going to use this? Um, because I'm in Amazon Web Services. It's a it's a you know, service that charges you, and if you're going to be having a lot of throughput, that's what you pay for. Um, my read capacity units of one and write capacity units of one is completely sufficient for what I'm going to be doing. You're when you're talking about the pay stuff, you're talking about fairly large quantities of data moving in and out of your database. I don't have that, not to worry. So I'm going to move onwards. Now, I can set up alarms. And that's a good thing to do because if you are going to actually be doing a lot of requests and throughput, guess what? You might want to know when you're getting pretty close to being charged for it. I don't need an alarm, so I'm going to turn this off. And now it's going to create that database, and it's going to go into this active creating mode. Now, I have the sample data that's already created, 
And that's it. It has a hash key of ID. That's it. Now, that's the thing about uh, not only SQLs or NoSQL databases is that they have a primary key and everything else in the table is essentially a hash table stored within the table that's referenced by the primary key. So unlike your structured data that you're used to with a SQL database, there's no structure. There's just the stuff that's in the table that's referenceable by the primary key. And it is basically key value pairs. So you can have any key value pairs in there. So let's move this out of the way for right now. Um, and let's actually go to coding this. Now, the first thing that I did here um, so that I could use this not only SQL database is I downloaded, I'm going to be doing .NET here, and I'm going to be doing .NET specifically because one of the classes I teach is a .NET class, and it's going to be kind of useful for people that might want to be able to use a database to use the .NET. And there is a nice STK for .NET. Um, it, the versions have changed. You can actually look at the source code of the AWS. Um, the web service is STK. It's relatively straightforward to use. It's extremely powerful and you can actually do a lot of stuff at a very, very low level. This is not specifically just for Dynamo, DynamoDB. This is the Amazon Web Services SDK. So it has tools to get with S3, EC2, all these other Amazon services are available through this SDK. Now, um, I've already created a project here. I'm going to go through what you would do to create this project, but I've already got this written, so I want to work through the code. If I were to do this, I would actually say File New, and I'd say Project. I'm going to cancel out of this. And if in the Visual C Sharp, I'm going to see this option called AWS, and I have Console Empty and Web Projects. Okay, I actually started with an empty project. I wanted to start with an empty project so I could actually write my own code specifically for an empty project, but I am going to use the Console object. So, what do I do here? Well, first my project was empty. I had this class with the public static void main, um, and um, but I had to add a few things to this class, and I'm I, I'm kind of going to keep everything into this one class. Once you get through the, breaking the learning curve with this, I think you can be able to move through some of the capabilities. You can do this very rapidly. Okay. Well, the first thing that I set up was a object called an Amazon Dynamo DB client with the name client. Okay. Amazon DynamoDB client, and uh, it, it's an implementation that allows you to really be able to access this. Now, the first time you create this um, uh, a project in here, you're going to be uh, asked for some information, which are your security information that goes with this. And I'm going to have to go back over here because you're going to have to supply this information and you need to know how to get to it. So if I go back to my management, and I pull this menu down right here, you're going to see that I've got the security credentials right here. I am not going to click on it, but however, if you do click on it, it's going to take you to a page which will actually give you the security credentials that you need to enter into the dialog here. What will happen is those security credentials will be um, entered into your app.config file. I'm not going to go through the details of app.config or even web.config work with this, but basically they're settings that are accessible throughout the application and in this case um, I'm going to be able to create um, this client and it's going to read the values for the security that I have in my app.config and that's the reason why I'm not going to click on it because if I do click on it it's going to actually show you those settings and I really don't want people hacking into my Amazon account. So I create a client which is an Amazon DynamoDB client. I have to configure this and the first thing I know, need to do is I'm going to set up an Amazon DynamoDB config, call it config, and it's going to be a new Amazon DB uh, config. And the reason for that is I have a specific service URL where I'm going to be able to get to my DynamoDB. Where do I find that? Well, I'm going to take you through how do you get the service URL. Let's go back over to here, and I'm back in my console, and you'll notice it says right here, Oregon. Okay. Oregon is where it is. Now I can move this around, but it's currently at the Oregon, US West Oregon. Well, great. That's just fantastic, but how do I tell the application where to look for my data? Well, there's another page that you can get through that is actually accessible through this very relatively straightforward is the regions and endpoints. And if you're at US West Oregon, the endpoint is dynamodb.uswest-2 amazon and aws.com and the protocols it responds to are basically https 
or HTTP and HTTP secure. So to get to my database, I have to set the uh, service URL equal to where I've actually got my application running. And then I um, go ahead and I instantiate the client to be equal to a new dy dy Amazon DynamoDB client using that configuration. Now you may set other things. Can service URL is not the only one, but that's the only one I actually needed to set away from the defaults here. Um, you could do this. I'm going to go ahead and put a line here where I say config dot and you can actually see the different um, things that you can do because you have the ability to set a proxy, you have the ability to set up um, more information that you have there, however, not needing to do that. Okay, so I will take this out. Okay, so gone. Now I am going to call a method in my class, my um, classes program and I'm going to call a method in my class called upload data. Now this is where you're going to do something that's probably more complex. You're probably not going to throw everything into one class and just work from one class. However, this is an easy demonstration. I want to make this simple. I want you to break the learning curve. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a line that the data is uploaded to continue press enter. Basically it's going to say okay um, if the data gets uploaded here we go. And this is underneath a try catch, so it's going to try to do this. If it doesn't work, it's going to run a catch. I added a few things to the catch here, like DynamoDB message, and I give the message if it's coming from different places. So if it's an Amazon DynamoDB exception, I want to know that it's a DynamoDB uh, message. What, who's actually sending me that exception so I can fix it? And I've got three different places. Well, actually, I have a generic exception right here, but two different places I actually want to know if I'm having problems, which is the Amazon DynamoDB exception and the Amazon service exception. And then I have account, a console.read line, and what that just does is it just sits there and waits till I hit enter because it's going to keep the console up until I hit the read line. So I'm going to upload data. So I'm going to take you through uploading data. Okay, now what I've done here is I've got a few objects, and I'm going to have to go up a little bit here to say, well, what? Um, using am I going to need to do this. Now I'm not using every single one of these right now but I have to use Amazon, DynamoDB, the document model and the data model to do what I need to do here. So those usings do need to be included in your application if you're using .NET. So that's going to give you access to a number of classes that you, ha that you might want to use in DynamoDB. In this case I'm going to want to use the table class where I'm going to create, create a, a sample table of this. I pass it the client Remember what that client was? It's an actual global object within this within the program class, which is the client, and then the name of the table sample data. Another class that you're going to have access to is the document class. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a variable called D1, and I'm going to set D1 ID equals one, field one equals a field, field two equals another field, and then I'm going to put this item into my sample table. This table is going to be a table, the table right now is being created locally, but when I do the put item, it's going to actually put it in the real table here. Okay, D2, same thing. So I'm basically putting two things in here. Important, ID. Okay, if you go back over to my table, okay, I'm going to go back over to my management console, and sample data has a hash key of ID. So I'm actually setting the primary key right here by setting ID1 and ID2. I put those items in and I should be able to get those into the table. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to come up here and I'm going to click run this. Now what's going to happen is it's going to run this upload data. It's really basic. I create a table. I create a new document. Okay, I fill in the document. Documents just works just like an array does. Okay, or actually in this case a list. Sample table. I put the item in there and up it goes. Okay, new document here. I add the different elements of the field and away it goes. So now I'm going to go ahead and run this. Okay, it runs. I'm going to bring the console over here so you can see it. It says data uploaded to continue. Press enter. Remember, I said I put that I put that console to just wait till I hit enter. Console goes away. Program's done executing. Well, what happens here? Let's go back over to here and let's now go to sample data and let's explore the table. Notice there's my two, there's my one, there's the fields that I entered there, and now I've got access to this. I have cre I've created a table, I've uploaded data to a table using .NET locally on my machine, using Amazon Web Services SDK. It really isn't that hard. Okay, there is a lot of complexity to doing it, but I want this is breaking that learning curve, so I want you to start with good programming. Future lectures are going to show you how to query the data 
and do some other more complex things with the databases that you've created. Thank you for uh, listening, and I hope this really is a useful for one and can get you started with Amazon Web Services and DynamoDB. Thanks.